Guys, before we get to this video, I want to give a quick thank you to our sponsor, Simply Safe. All right, we're getting ready to go to SCT Atlanta. It is 7 a.m. We are leaving now. Hopefully, be there by like two o'clock. Uh, I s spent some time last night on the car. I don't think Bronte can even tell. Look, I cleaned up the exhaust. I like polished it. Oh yeah. I put a white white lights up here instead of those amber ones. Oh, that looks nice. I, yeah, I had those for orange. like two years. Really? <laughs> Never put them in. And then I also did these black back here. These little side indicators. Just trying to make the outside look a little more appealing. Mm -hmm. You know? Cool. I like the exhaust. I think it came out kind of cool. It's like polished instead of like that, you know, that stainless look yeah. that it had. Eventually I'll get it actually polished by uh, my buddies over at Dieter's Customs Finishing. Yeah, it's cool. But for now, we are on the road. Let's go to freaking Streetcar Takeover Atlanta. Unfortunately, like I said, last time ever racing at this track because after this year, they are closing. And it's always sad to see a racetrack close. So I wanna go be there for the end of it. All right, to Wawa first because, you know, number one gas station. Well, we stopped at our first stop. We are an hour and a half in, and Bronte had to use the bathroom, unsurprisingly. Hopefully that's not a common theme every hour. We drive, we have to stop. But I'm just checking the straps here real quick. If you guys notice, I moved the car pretty far back this time. It's usually a little farther forward. Figured I'd try to get some tongue weight off of it. The truck feels exactly the same. The Camaro is like back literally as far as it can go. It's already hanging off the back of the trailer a little bit. And these straps are super short right now and the fronts are really long so I wouldn't want to put it back any farther than this but this seems like a good, good spot to be at. All the straps are tight. Coolers on there good, tents on there good still. Still got a football in there so yeah. The uh, truck definitely has a little bit less tongue weight, but it's not loaded down as badly as when we went to Texas. All right, let's keep on driving. All right, we're still cruising along. It's 1.30. We just stopped at Bucky's in Georgia. I didn't even know they had one over there. Must be a new one. Nobody told me about it. Weird. But just stopped at Bucky's. got a bunch of good snacks. Bounty's got some french fries, some ketchup. I got a sandwich, and now I'm eating some kettle corn. Mm -hmm. Really cooking along. We'll be at the track at like 4 o'clock-ish, unload, tech in, and they're roll racing today, so we'll be able to uh, kind of just tech in and relax a little bit, find a good spot, and then hopefully do some testing tonight is the goal, if that happens. But you never really know what the schedule is going to shape up to be. Let me say what I'm most excited about. Most excited about having a scooter. I thought you were going to say this weather. Say. That too. And this weather because it's not freaking humid right now. It's like 75 right now and not humid and it is so Beautiful. nice. <laughs> it's so nice. We made it. We made it to freaking Atlanta Dragway. This track is so nice. Look, is. At those, look at those stands. I know. I was bragging to you about <laughs> it, how nice it is because I've been here a bunch of times. I freaking love this track. Yeah. So we're going to go walk around and I'll show you guys some of the some of the tracks Absolutely. they're just doing roll racing today so we're just gonna unload tech in be ready to go for tomorrow and unfortunately no testing tonight yeah. but we get to we'll watch some roll tomorrow. racing i guess yeah we'll watch a little bit of roll racing and then we'll, we'll head go to the get hotel some chick fil a and then come back or something <laughs> we can get that at home we gotta get something that's georgia based what what is georgia based that's here on that road oh jangles they have those near us don't they no. i don't want or that cookout. i want chick-fil-a <laughs> all right Let's go walk around. Well, Bronte, you know how I always talk about wanting a uh, supercharged two-door short bed truck? Yeah. Justin Keith from Streetcar Takeover has probably the nicest one ever. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you can really tell the color with just the GoPro, but it's LT4 swapped with a 10-speed paddle shifters. Oh, so nice. Build specialty wheel like that. Look at the interior seats are so nice everything under the sun is done to this truck it's just incredible job
feel like we're in Houston. I know, it's very Houston-like where you walk under the, or you drive under the uh, tower. Yeah. It's such an awesome track. They have so much bleachers I'm and just- I'm so excited to see you race here. This I know, so cool. so cool. It's so pretty. Yeah, really nice track. Oh my god, it like doesn't seem like it's that long. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Because it's so big, I think it makes it look smaller. Well, Bronte, we passed tech without really even doing anything. I'm very confused. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't look at anything. He literally said, roll up your window, wrote the number down, and we left. Yeah. Maybe he thought we were just really slow, and it didn't matter. Oh, you're filming. That's me getting annoyed at Cooper when he's <laughs> When I'm being I an idiot. Yeah, I can't write like I can't write it like that. Can you write it if I put it on my helmet? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I need like a flat surface. All right, well, you don't have to. The attitude is at a ten. We need it at a two. Well, you, I said already out there. I said let me. Yeah, but it needs to be like the right size and everything, so it'd be so hard. So tape it out. <laughs> Here, hold this. I'll do it. So tape it out to see the measurements, and then we can take it off, and over. I'll write it on here. Well, let me just tell you guys what we're doing because I didn't even explain it. Bronte just started yelling at me. Because <laughs> you're dumb. You're a stupid boy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Stupid A. 90% of the viewers are <laughs> boys, so... I don't know. You're just offending a lot of people. I'm sorry, people, but Cooper's not using his brain right now. Are you sorry? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you better not. Right in my line of sight. There we go. Good. Guys, we're at the uh, track. It is about 10.30. Track goes hot at noon. Driver's meeting. Signed up for the streetcar class. Getting the car prepped. Getting the nitrous bottles warm. Getting all the tools ready just in case. You know, I might need something in a pinch real quick. I've been there before where I'm suited up and then I need something real quick. Can't go fumbling around for everything. So... Getting the car all ready, and we will be making a pass here pretty soon, right after the driver's meeting. Before this video starts, guys, I want to give a quick thank you to our sponsor. What's going on, guys? Before this video starts, I want to give a quick thank you to our sponsor, Simply Safe. They're a reliable home security system. You order it online or over the phone, delivers right to your door, 24 7 monitoring, no contracts, no hidden fees easy to install, let's check it out. You can configure Simply Safe to your exact needs. These are just a few of their items and sensors that they sell. The home base connects them all together. You can get the smart door lock, camera, keypad, doorbell. They have a flood sensor, they have a freeze sensor, glass break sensor, motion sensor, panic button, fire alarm, entry sensor, and then the key fob so you can bring this on the go with you. Their stuff works so nicely and it's just, all smoothly connects. You don't have to fumble around with a bunch of different stuff. The app just connects everything together. I've used a bunch of different home security systems in the past. Simply Safe is by far the most inclusive. It keeps my house nice and safe and secure when I'm away on trips. Me and Bronte are out to dinner. When the dogs are just home by themselves, we can monitor them. The sensors help so we know exactly what they're doing if they're getting into anything that they're not supposed to. Their 24 seven monitor system will call the police if there's anybody trying to break into the house at any point, whether we are home or away. If you wanna find out more information about Simply Safe, click the link down in my description of the video. SimplySafe.com slash Cooper Bogetti for more information. You will not be disappointed in this system. These are awesome. Well, I've noticed a slight issue like on and off. I mean, I've, I've noticed it before when I go over the car after events, but this, wheel on this on the passenger side is like farther back in the fender well for some reason i i've looked under the car i can't find anything bent or moved or changed that would have caused that but it's getting really close to where this fender gets sharp and you can see it kind of kind of got the it's tire a little bit tire, yeah. yeah so that probably happened on the street the other day when it was really aired up mm -hmm. because i aired it up like five psi more than i normally do to just go drive it on the street yeah and you can see on the other side, this one is really far from the fender. Yeah. But I also cut this fender really nicely, like there's nothing here. Oh, okay. I cut this fender like super aggressively when I first fit these wheels. Mm -hmm. And then when I fit them, I was like, wait, I didn't need to cut them that aggressively. So I didn't do it that bad on the other side. But now it's kind of 
so kind gonna, of showing itself to be needed. So you're gonna cut it right now? So I'm gonna jack it up and try to cut that fender out a little bit more. All right. All right? Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. I got my handy dandy cut up wheel. <laughs> Probably the best tool to ever bring to a track because a cut off wheel and a grinder and a flappy disc, you can do anything. Yeah. Convinced. So I'm just gonna kind of cut it out a little bit right here and then probably flappy disc it down track side stuff all right let's see go <laughs> you know let me just quick uh quick plug here so the vargas brothers when we were at cletus and cars in bradenton borrowed my hammer mm -hmm. and never gave it back oh yeah mike i'm looking at you <laughs> looking at you mike <laughs> Never brought my hammer back. <laughs> you owe us a hammer. <laughs> yeah. That thing was a relic too. That was an old hammer. sitting out in the sun all day they're at 19. that's freaking why yeah so you need to teach me how to do this and or i just need to do it right before like i strap in just bring this up there with me yeah but i can also like check them quick like when we're like four cars back at least it's crazy yeah. because like they are they're radial tires so they're not they shouldn't grow that much just in the heat but after a burnout they get hot too and get a little bigger but yeah 19 on this one we'll see what the other one's at i gotta watch the video and see what it does it should have hooked up on that. Obviously, tire pressure would be already too much. Yeah. I checked the other one. And I think the guy double bowled me. He did. Yeah, I was like, all right, cool, courtesy staging. Yeah.
It went wheels up there a little bit. Next to the uh, next to the Viper. Everything sounds okay. I think I need to uh, tighten up my front limiter straps. Bronte, how did that feel from you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't it felt know. a lot higher in the car. Yeah. But looking back at it, it definitely too bad, but that's yeah. definitely the biggest deal. So I need to tighten up the front limiter straps again because they, they kind of just loosen up it seems like. And I want to give a quick shout out to Profab because they put these guys on and those are called wheelie sleds. So when you come down you hit this instead and look at it, it is literally flattened from uh, coming down on it and grinding almost on the track. But that saves you hitting your trans pan or your oil pan. I have a belly pan but it saves you from hitting all that stuff. So. Big shout out to them. That's always nice to have those. <laughs> and honestly, when I first brought the car there, I didn't even know I was getting those. I didn't even think about it, I didn't ask for it. They just put them on because they've been doing this a while and they know, so shout out to them for doing that. All right, well, I tightened up the front end a lot, so hopefully he doesn't do that again. Bronte, I'm sure you don't want me to do that again. No more wheelies. I don't want to do that again. I want to go right down the track but I'm actually also surprised how fast it went. 9-1 at 122. It was almost an eight second fast still at, a, at 122 miles an hour. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't realize it was going that fast. Like it felt so slow. I just pulled the parachute because I was like, oh, you know, I should just have that as a habit. Tell them what we forgot to do. Uh, you know, I feel like that's your job. Yeah. I'm gonna say it. We forgot to put on she the CO2 didn't click the CO2 the switch on, which... It's on down, not... Whatever clicked it on. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll show you guys the CO2 switch I'm talking about. This right here, on down, is the CO2 switch for my parachute. Everybody who has a uh, parachute like this runs a switch like this. But, you know, sometimes you overlook something little like that. We try to just do it right when we uh, pull up to the line, but I'll probably just do it a little earlier next time. Tough break. Thankfully, I was going slow. The parachute's still deployed. It's just a little slower to deploy than usual. All right, this car is really fast from what I've seen. He's double entered into classes. so weird because I over bumped like it it seemed like I did but it didn't show red until he so this car right here stock bottom end it's personal best 843 at 159 miles an hour feel a little cheated but I, I bumped through that's what it comes down to I, I feel like the tree screwed up because it didn't I don't know I mean it definitely didn't but it just felt weird because the way that it uh the way that it showed that I went red, you know? That was stupid. It didn't even show at first. Bump box was too aggressive that time. Last pass, perfect. This pass, too much. Can't win. 
cannot win with bumping. You guys know that's always been an issue, bumping the car in. It's an irritating way to lose. Like, it just bumps through. It bounced too much. It worked the last pass. Yeah, the orange Viper, I bumped in. 100%. It bumped in perfectly on the pass before that. Watch the video, it bumps right in. I may have been too far into the first bulb. Then the second pass versus the Viper, it worked fine. Then the third pass just there it went too far. It's some it's it's partially to do with track conditions, how tight it is, how far it'll move. But it definitely shouldn't have moved that far. That sucks. That's a that's a terrible way to get out. But like even the guy in the lane next to me was confused what happened because the tree like went so quick that it didn't even give him a green. Like when I go red like that, it should have given him a green right away that he won. But it didn't. It was just more aggressive. I, I think what happened was I was too far into the blight. So if I'm like, so say the light's here and my tire is here in it, a bump will put me into the second one, but my tire is here in it right before, then it'll push me through the second one. It's all about like right where your front tire is. That's why I like somebody pulling you into the lights is kind of nice. I, I normally don't need it, but yeah, they get you like right there. Tough way to go out, but it happens. Freaking bump right through the light. Yeah, it hurts a little. It hurts a little. All right, guys, we just loaded up, heading home. I'm gonna uh, update you guys on the situation once we're driving, but that'll do it for this video. We'll talk a little bit once we're driving. Unfortunately, it did not go the way we planned. What's going on, guys? Back in the car, heading back from uh, Streetcar Takeover Atlanta. It was a freaking awesome event. I did not have any time to outro the video after the racing because we were just hanging out, talking to people. There were some awesome fans there. Really cool to get to hang out with everybody and have such a fun event up there in Atlanta because that is one of the last races we'll have there. Streetcar Takeover is doing another one in September, and unfortunately, that apparently will be the last big event that they ever do at Atlanta Dragway, which is really sad because that track is super awesome and that area is so great. It just, it's just sad. It hurts to see a track get closed down for freaking apartment buildings. They could build those anywhere. There's already a track there. Let the track stay. But aside from that, I wanted to go over the events of the day. I like to kind of do a post-game recap. I feel like one of those sports uh, announcers on the morning after shows, whatever, where they talk about what happened, you know, all that nonsense. I don't really watch sports, so. So first pass, uh, car sat out in the sun, ended up uh, ballooning the tires, and the tire pressure rose a good amount just sitting in the staging lanes waiting and I got up there and it spun pretty good didn't get a good test pass and unfortunately I didn't even get to test my bump box like I was planning to because that Jeep Grand Cherokee pulled right up and double bulbed me and I didn't really have time I could have sat there and waited and he would have pulled back out and I could have uh I could have like made him redo it, but chances are he probably doesn't understand what he was doing and would have just double bowled me again. So I just pulled in, got up on the two step and let the tree go green and saw what happened. Would have been nice to test my bump box on the first pass, but that Jeep was too eager to go. Courtesy staging was in effect, so yeah. maybe next time. Second pass, we pulled up and we were lining up against probably the fastest car on property, the uh, twin turbo Viper built by Vengeance, owned by Ned. Really awesome group of guys, super awesome car. 
it wasn't a competition race or anything, but we just kind of felt the desire to line up with each other. And he spun, I wheelied, which is very interesting. My bump box worked perfect on that pass, like literally bumped in exactly how I wanted it. I was, I was pretty happy with that. I felt confident. I felt confident with the bump box and everything. It seemed like it was going to work fine all day. I was like, all right, cool. Went right through. Um, I didn't really get back in the throttle after that because it was just a qualifying pass and I knew it was an all run field and I knew they were going to put me into the wild class no matter what just because they would do that if a car if a car wants to bump up into the wild class they'll always let that happen they won't let you bump down into the mild street but they'll let you bump into wild street so i knew that i was going to be in the wild anyways but being bottom you know that you're going to be racing number one qualifier but i was just i was just going for wild so third pass of the day pull up cars tightened up the front suspension a lot tightened up the chains the limiter strap see if I can uh, keep the wheelie from happening again I don't know I don't fully know why it wheelied I didn't get another pass to get any data on what it was doing not 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 in the wheelie or if it was gonna do it again after those changes unfortunately I really wanted to get that data I ended up drawing the that blue Camaro which that car is crazy fast. He said he's never ran it through the quarter under power, but he's lifted at the eighth and coasted to a 7.30 before. So yeah, that car's pretty fast. <laughs> it was like a small block, big single turbo car. And it was like radial versus the world style suspension separating like crazy, just like driving down the track, like very well dialed in car. He was running the 28 inch tire class the small tire class too he was double entered and he was probably probably fixing to win both because he had a hit a well set up combo good team behind him and they were definitely uh they were definitely out to win some money they, those guys had it figured out i pulled up into the beams like normal lit the first bulb got on the two-step like i always do clicked the bump box I was I was holding the brakes pretty tight clicked the bump box and it just pushed the car so far forward like just insane it was like bouncing in and out of the beams I'll I'll kind of overlay what the lights were doing it was it was throwing me off like it everything happened on the lights like super quickly so you couldn't really exactly tell what was happening and then after that it didn't we didn't get a red light right away and he didn't get a green light right away which was weird so it, it was definitely an odd deal. I, I even looked over at the other driver and he was confused in the Camaro. He, he didn't know what was going on. Like we were both confused. And apparently I had like three seconds to back up and pull back in the beams and get back on the trans brake, which in three seconds, none of that's gonna happen. That's that's unfortunate. I, I think I know what my problem is. I think my front brakes are just not good enough or there's not enough brake pressure on them. So I'm gonna try to uh, do some tests this week on the front brakes, see if I can see if I can figure out what the issue is there. If they're just not holding the car, maybe jack it up, hold the brakes, see if I can turn it, how much pressure there really is on it. And I, I think it just might be truly time to redo the front brakes and get some new aftermarket maybe do some four piston brakes maybe put a line lock in that'll hold the front brakes on the trans brake because that's always nice too that's a nice feature that people use a lot for uh trans brakes and bump boxes you can have the trans brake trigger the line lock for the front so you can hold the car pretty steady like that or I just need to figure out brake pressures and see what my bias is because it might be, it might just be all screwed up. I, I gotta look into that a little bit more. But I'm gonna try to dial in that so our next race we don't have to deal with these issues anymore. But you guys know this has been plaguing me for a while now. And it's just, uh, it's just sad. It sucks to lose a race that way, but in the end of the day, the car's not broken. I did very little maintenance on the car all day. I just kind of 
I didn't even put gas in it. I just filled it up before I left and just, you know, did tire pressures all day. So nothing too crazy. Going home with a running driving car. The wheelie didn't break anything as far as I can tell. Might check the alignment, make sure that's all good. But other than that, the car is doing in, in good shape. Probably try to get out to Bradenton this week to do some testing, test the bump box, test the, uh, test all that stuff, see my wheelie, see if it does that again, and what I might have to do to fix that. But definitely gonna go through the braking system and see if there's an issue there. It's always felt decent on the, on the shutdown, but I think, I think our front brakes are just done, and I just need to go to like some uh, better drag style brakes pull some weight out of it, clean up everything, and ditch those OEM stock front brakes. On. But that'll do it, guys. That was the little post-game recap. I really like sitting down with a clear mind and uh, talking to you guys about this stuff after the fact because it's uh, definitely a lot nicer to look at the videos and know what was really happening before I just, you know, get back to the trailer and start spewing out stuff when I don't even when I don't even have a clear idea of what truly happened yet. So, I like doing these, but that'll do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it saucy. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.